Cool. All righty. Uh, this is your podcast, so start it how start up however you want. Uh, you know, I I figured you know it's been a while since we've done a podcast, and a lot of people you know really are interested in kind of learning, seeing stuff. I was watching some road videos, and people were like, "Please keep making stuff." So I was like, "You know what? Let's 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 do it." This quarantine's a perfect excuse to to pump out some really easy stuff. So, how are you doing since the quarantine? I, well, not fantastic to be perfectly honest. I I lost my job. That's so that's yeah. That's rough. That's always a fun thing. That's never fun for anybody. How about you? Uh, I've been doing okay. Uh, I'm honestly, it's it's pretty good. I'm working from home. You know. Uh, my schedule knocked up an hour, but I, basically, like I'm off around uh, in the same time and working at home at the same time. Since um, you know, it usually takes about twenty to thirty minutes to get home from the office, so that time's kind of eliminated. It's good. Uh, I'm in a job that's kind of you know uh, immune from the furlough that's going on. Yeah. So it has to do with uh, servicing hospitals. Yeah, that you kind of got a solid. In this medically focused era, you kind of got a solid area to work from. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, a lot of fun. So yeah, like I, I, I said right before we were recording, like I have nothing new going on with me. Honestly, like I, like I'm not the only new game I'm playing is uh, Animal Crossing. How are you liking that? I saw some of the shirts that you were making in wrestling. Yeah, I, I made a bunch yeah. of wrestling shirts. I I'm just playing the game as like as normally as a person plays that game. Like you just play it like two, three hours a day, uh, do your dailies and, and just advance it. Like it's like there's no super main goal other than trying to get KK Slider to come play, but that's about <laughs> it. I love KK. I've been doing uh, all right on my end. I got let's see. I was I played Doom Eternal when it came, which was a lot of fun. I'm playing Half Life Alex. That's I'm I'm most of the way through the game, um, but there's still like a uh, like a, it's a lot of setup because we have the VR in the you know, the living yeah. room, um, and like I have it on my PC, and Vin has it downloaded on his PC, but we still have to like drag our towers out there and hook it up and everything. So it only happens every now and then. And right now I'm playing FF7 Remake, which I'm really liking. Um, yeah, I'm I, I kind of... really sad. I kind of figured uh, you'd, you'd be into that. Yeah, yeah. I've... Okay, so... I, the, I can see from what I've, like, seen of it, mm -hmm. it's not classic Final Fantasy fighting style. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's a there's an it's an action-based system. I actually quite enjoy it. Um you know me, I'm I'm a button masher. Yeah, I, I, I keep clicking until things are dead, um, and it's not like um like uh so Xenoblade. Xenoblade has sort of an a, a, a live battle system, where your characters attack automatically, and you select like their specials once okay. their you know timers are up. It's not like that. You can do that. There's a, there's a mode for that where they attack automatically and you just select their their specials. Um, okay. But thankfully, it is a it is a uh, you know press square to, to spend it's very kingdom hearts like okay. in that regard um it's it'd be nice if there was more than one like uh just standard attack button like if there was a light and a heavy you know like they did like a like a like a like a brawler kind but it's uh you can at least switch modes which is pretty good I, i'm enjoying the battle system quite a bit okay um it's actually I, i'm playing it through it like, all the way on normal difficulty which i didn't think i'd be able to do i thought this would be like one of those times where at some point i'd get really frustrated or stuck and I'd have to, like, lower the difficulty um, just for, like, a boss or something. But I haven't had to do that so far. The strategy is pretty invigorating, and it's actually really easy to understand. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Okay. And the story is fun. I like the way they've expanded it out. Sorry, I've, I'm messing around with some settings here. Get it? Oh, yeah. I was, pulling, I was pulling up uh, some gameplay of, of, the, uh, of the game. Right on. Let's see. So... I could pull some of mine from my PS4 if I need to. Here, I'll, I'll just pop uh, it up. Yeah. I can actually make sure that you're seeing it too. Uh, really? Screen share. Oh, that messed stuff up. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Wait, something's happening. Hey, look at that! It's me. God, uh, God, I'm fat and washed out. Yeah. Good so Lord. this That's is terrible. I don't know what this. So it. When I when I can you see it by the way? 
I can see the dis. There we go. Okay, yes, I can see that. So, the 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 description I've heard of the gameplay is, mm-hmm. uh, very much like Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, very similar. Like, have uh, have you noticed like any major changes in the story to the? Uh, oh, tons, uh, tons, yeah. So it's important to remember, I'm I'm really just now playing through my first playthrough of the original game. Because um, back when it launched, my brother had it, and I got to play, like, m- most of Midgar before my parents found out it was, like, a teen game, and they were like, we feel like Evan shouldn't play something like that. He's only nine. You know? <laughs> and I never played it in the interim years. I played a lot of the other uh, uh, action-based uh, Final Fantasy games. Um, but I never played uh, seven or any of the like mainline Final Fantasies since then, except for like parts of ten and like a good a good chunk of ten too. I loved ten too. <laughs> ten too is great. I love LeBlanc. Um, um, but yes, uh, I've been playing the original because I figured you know the remix coming out. I'm gonna want to have sort of a mindset of uh, of the world and everything. And a lot of memories have been flooding back, which is gorgeous. But yes, it is. It is because you only it goes only goes up to Midgar. Uh, until you leave Midgar, which is about the end of the first disc of three. Um, okay, so it's not the full game. No, 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 no. There's going to be three games, okay. uh, one for basically each disc. Um, but yes, it's 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 highly expanded. There's actually like side quests and everything in it too. Which there's uh, there are some side quests once you get out of Midgar in the original game, but there's basically none out in, in the original. Um, like a, it's a straight shot. When you're in Midgar, yeah, frozen uh, narratively, which is and this one, there's a lot of really side quests and like here. towns and stuff that you take care of, I'm and all the the actual town. story itself has like been very expanded out and and and, um, and upgraded. Like you actually learn about like Jesse and Biggs and Wedge. Um, you go to Jesse's house um, at one point, funnily enough, and you get to meet her parents, which is fun. Well, I'm just gonna stop talking. You still there, buddy? Edit this in later. Uh oh. Zach? Did it happen? It happened, didn't it? Well, this was a. This worked well. Time a song. Hey, Hello? there you are. Can you hear me? I cannot. There's nothing coming on you, and your screen's freezing. Okay, you're you're a bit you're a bit choppy for me. Playing videos probably isn't great. I, I, I I'm I'm hearing you. It's like okay, it's a little choppy, but it's, I can hear you. Okay, okay, it's good. There we go. Yeah. Okay, that was fun. So yeah, I I didn't stop recording too. No, I did not. Okay, cool. So anyways, what you're saying? Uh, well, I was saying, like, the story's very expanded out. Like, you get to learn about uh, Jesse Biggs and Wedge, and you get to um, do more stuff in, like, uh, Aerith's, uh, the, Sector, the Sector 6 slums where Aerith lives, and uh, you get to go to Jesse's house at one point and meet her, like, mom and dad. It's okay. really fun. Uh, it's, it's, it's good so, so far. Okay, so not well known to a lot of people, but... I know almost nothing about Final Fantasy. I've never really mm-hmm. played the games, never been super interested in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I heard people talking about, like, especially when you get later into the game, there's going to be mm-hmm. some issues with, like, char- certain characters being optional in the original game, but now being very popular and probably having to be more integrated into the game now. So, from what I understand, Yuffie, I believe, is an optional character. I think Vincent is as well. And uh, Red um, Red Thirteen. Red Thirteen, you meet. Um, okay. He's he's he, well. We should meet him before the end of this game. Okay. Because uh, you meet him in Midgar before you before you leave. Okay. When you infiltrate uh, Shinra, and he follows you on the boat and everything. I don't think he's optional. Okay. Um. He. I. I, I certainly didn't like 
he, he tagged along with me in my playthrough of the classic, so. Okay. Um, I haven't gotten to Kate Sith, or, uh, sorry, Ket She, um, Vincent, and Yuffie. Oh, Kate Sith, and, that's uh, one thing, I've not read 13. Yeah, yeah, Ket She, apparently, is the proper pronunciation, but we all grew up calling him Kate Sith. Like normal people. Yeah. yeah. Yes, um, I think the three of them are optional. Okay. Yeah, and they... Uh, when they showed Reno, they basically used his, like, Advent Children design for... Yeah. Uh, he's a little... Like, the, the model's a little different. They they don't have Quentin Flynn. It's a different voice actor. Okay, I'm guessing a lot um, of them are probably different voice actors. Basically, the entire cast is, is new. Um, Steve Burton's not playing Cloud. Um, Mina Savari... Like, Aerith has had a different voice actor in, like, almost everything she's been in, so that's not surprising. Yeah. I don't know who's playing Tifa, but it doesn't look like it's, um... What's that? Rachel A. Cook. I was about to say, um, wasn't, wasn't someone famous in the Kingdom Hearts for Aerith? Uh, it was Mandy Moore. Mandy Moore, yeah. Uh, it was, was, was Aerith in the first one, and then it was Mina Zavari in uh, Kingdom Hearts 2, because okay. they were using the Advent Children uh, cast. Yeah. Um, yeah. What... Well, but they got many uh, more. Rude looks entirely different. Oh, go ahead. What's up? Uh, I was going to say Rude uh, is definitely a different model and a different actor. He okay. looks entirely different. But I was going to say, um, many more was in Kingdom Hearts one. But if I yes. remember correctly, she didn't play the character she played in Tangled in Kingdom Hearts three, right? I. Uh, no, she did. Okay. Uh, uh, they all actually reprised their roles, I believe. Okay. Uh, Zachary Levi was there. I believe Mandy Moore was there as well. Okay. There was a surprisingly, like, star-studded cast in Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I know that, like, there was, there was like, well, I haven't... You know what? I'm going to look it up, actually. I haven't super played through much of Kingdom Hearts 3. I got to, like, I did Hercules level... Mm-hmm. And then uh, Hercules level, and then I think I went to Toy Story, and mm -hmm. I stopped at the first level of Toy Story. Uh, it was fun. I, I I need to replay it because I played all the way through it, but it was over like two days, and I barely remember the ending. I remember it not being very satisfying. Yeah. Um, and now there's like a, a DLC that expands the story more, but it's like a boss rush, and I'm like. Bleh. Yeah, it's, it's and I've heard that it's basically their way of explaining what happened with all the Final Fantasy characters. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I mean, <laughs> on, on Kingdom Hearts three, I played because I obviously I'm, I'm a Kingdom Hearts fan. Yeah. It's 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 I have a love hate relationship with that game, but I've played literally every version of the game I can get my hands on. <laughs> that includes like you know the 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 non-canon games which <laughs> yeah um but you're saying you don't love dream drop distance i hate i hate dream drop distance <laughs> i fucking hate that game uh mechanically it's a fun game story-wise it basically eradicates every game that came before it i have no idea what the gameplay of dream drop distance is it sounds like it sounds like one of those it sounds like a tetris like game no, no, no. Uh, Dream Drop Distance is is uh, is, a, is a standard core game. It's it plays basically like uh, like uh, one. Okay. Um, it, it's like a full fledged game in terms of its. I, I guess and I guess the drop may, makes me think of like a Puyo mm -hmm. Puyo type game. That was uh the idea was that they were dropping into Dream Worlds oh. and it was it was on the 3DS so it was designed to take fair, uh, a f you know full advantage of the 3D effect okay. by having like the 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 worlds come up at you it which obviously okay. didn't matter to me because I can't you know see yeah. it in 3D um yeah um I think like the only person I know who got like replaced in Kingdom Hearts three is I don't think Hayden Penetair played Kyrie yeah yeah it was uh somebody else. It was uh, Allison Stoner. Okay. Um, but let me let me verify. Uh, let's see. Aqua, of course, super cute. Renee, yeah, Painter, and Silhouette, Young Ericus. Oh my god, Drake Bell played Young Ericus. <laughs> yeah, good. Scott Adsit played uh, Baymax from Big Hero 6, just okay. like the big movie. Of course, they got Haley Joel Osment. Uh, let's see. We are looking specifically for. Oh, they didn't get uh, Billy Crystal for Mike Wazowski, of course. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, Kristen, uh, Kristen Bell was uh, Anna. Uh, where is? Come on. Come on, I know you're in here. Uh, no, okay. So uh, Rapunzel was played by Kelsey Lansdow. Yeah. So no, it was not uh, many more. Although Zachary Levi did play, uh, did play uh, Flynn Flynn Rider. <laughs> uh, what was his real name? Eugene. Yeah. Eugene. And Tom Kenny was in it too as Rabbit. Aw. Yeah, that because I had heard about that. I had heard that like Mandy Moore was in the first Kingdom Hearts, but they couldn't get her to play the character that she played in Disney for the. <laughs> that is interesting. That's weird. I mean, you'd think that would have been like part of the contract is basically everything tingle related you'll you'll come for but i mean they didn't, they didn't hold on who plays uh woody uh that is going to actually be tom hank's brother yeah i was gonna say plays, they get uh, woody in most things that's it to get tom yeah. or jim i believe i believe it is jim hanks because he plays he does basically every tom hanks yeah. voice in, in anything that's not you know so i was gonna say to that's up the money for tom <laughs> that's probably the kind of deal they have with mandy moore is like Standard impersonator yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's the bread and butter of the VA world. Yeah. Uh, but beyond that, like, yeah, I've, I played a bit of Half Life Alex. I'm at the same part we were we were talking about last time when we were both at the same area. Oh, right on. I haven't played any more of it since then, just because I've just been busy with other stuff. I've got to what I consider right now to be the most terrifying um, part of it. I don't know if you've heard of Jeff. No. Okay, I'm at Jeff. He's chapter seven. Okay, and he's um, yeah, I think it, it, it's 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 nerve wracking. I, I think I'm still in like chapter two or three. Like, mm -hmm. how big is the game? Like, how many hours? I don't. I'm like, so I'm. Let me check my Steam. I can see how long I've played it. Um, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. you have nine hours. Nine hours. Uh, okay, so I'm at I'm at chapter seven. I think there's like ten chapters, okay. maybe. It's it's meant to be like a it feels like a like a pretty in depth uh, VR game. Okay. okay. Yeah. And like it's uh, the one thing I really wanted to say about Half Life Alex is like people were talking about like if they were going to release a new Half Life game, mm -hmm. they would want to do something new and something that changes like like changes how you perceive something because that's kind of what half-life mm -hmm. does it like it when half-life 2 came out it changed how like physics engines work and mm -hmm. how like and how you work with like uh fps games like first person they're games. meant to be generational games yeah. yeah and they said like if you release a vr game if steam was going or if, uh, valve was going to release a vr game they would they wouldn't release it until they can do something that like changes how vr is done mm -hmm. and i think they did that I think they did incredibly well with it. Um, I would have liked because it's got such a robust physics engine. I would have liked for because you know you basically your only mode of uh, yeah of of, uh, of interacting and attack is with your guns. Yeah, you could pick up anything anywhere. And of course, I've been doing little bits with like you know when I got to the 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 hotel, I was behind the bar just chatting up you know nobody. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. So you could do a lot of prop play, but you can't like use those. As like actual like weapons and stuff, uh, that would have been nice um, to, to can, be in there. You can use uh, bottles and bricks and stuff on like uh, on a uh, head crabs, I think. Can you? I, I I have to try that. I think you can like throw them at them to like daze them before you shoot them. Okay. Because that's one of the reasons I want to try Bone Works because apparently that's like the whole point of that game. Yeah, I've, I've been use use stuff in the environment. But specifically, the one mechanic that I wanted to point out as being the game changer for Half Life Alex is the retrieval system, mm -hmm. the the grab and flick. Yeah, like, it's a blast. Like that's the thing is like the biggest problem I've had with past VR games is that like the there has not been for one there hasn't been a a like what's what's the word I'm trying to look for a like standard for how you pick up stuff some yeah some things will have like automatically if you click something it goes to your hand some things you have to physically go over and pick up depending on like room scale and some things it's kind of like kind of like somewhere in between like you can magnetize it towards you but mm -hmm. i think the way that they do it in half-life alex is 
so far the best and most intuitive way I've had of picking stuff up and interacting with the environment because like yeah from when you're first introduced to it like within five minutes it feels natural it's it's immediate i mean we've all you know mimed fishing and shit yeah. like that and it's basically just that it's yeah grab it it's awesome it's exactly the kind of like magic wand shit we've all wanted to do growing yeah. up yeah i do think it has a it has a precedent of sort of setting the standard yeah you know, and becoming sort of the the quality of life improvement that vr has going forward yeah i agree it i'm hoping that like they don't lock it behind something like i hope that people are able to use it to like use that engine use i don't know what they're calling the new engine for this vr stuff um i think it is a source engine yeah but Um, it's not the source engine i think it's no no no. it's like a modified version of it um, but I mean, Valve has never really had a problem. They, they 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 really encourage people usually to use their engines and adapt them. I mean, look at the way we got um oh what was it called, um, uh, Counter Strike Global Offensive or whatever it is. Yeah. That's that's theirs was literally just people made that game out of uh, Half Life's original engine, and they were like, that's really good. We should hire those people. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like everything they make is open source. Even the the Valve Index is designed to be modded. Yeah. So I I wouldn't be surprised if they're just like, here's that engine, go for it. You know, and and town. like, and you know that I I go off the Rift S, and it works perfectly fine with mm-hmm. it. Like I, I've yeah. not had any issues. Yeah, we I mean we're using uh, Vin's uh, st- uh, original Vive with it, and it's a little weird with the the track pads instead of having the sticks. Um, we do have an index uh, ordered. I'm not certain if we're gonna, you know, continue on that order just because I've had a lot of fun with VR, but it's a lot of like work. Yeah, and it'll depend upon how into it I am uh, when it's finally ready for me to pay like five hundred dollars. Okay. Um, but I would like to try it, and I like the idea of the finger grips. Um, yeah. So yeah. I, I do want to try it, and, and Boneworks apparently is not very good with the Vive wand, so I do want to get those controllers. Yeah. So we probably will still put down for it when it comes to it. I mean, you could always just go for just the controllers. Yeah, well, we put in the order for the controllers and the headset because you know me, I. This is my field of view. Yeah. I have I have so little of it in in general, but uh, it has a higher resolution than the Valve and uh, than the um than the Vive, and it has a higher field of view yeah. than the Vive, um, and that's I mean that, that speaks to me, <laughs> um, obviously. So yeah, that's uh, I've been playing that. Um... Mm-hmm. And Animal Crossing, and beyond that, I've been laying in bed and watching old videos. That's right. about it, dude. It is. We are living in the in the in the binging age. I've yeah. been binging SpongeBob, uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. I rewatched all of uh, freaking Black Books that yeah. you just sent it to me. What we do in the shadows. I've watched a whole lot of new shows. I, I'm taking some time every now and then to do like auditions, which I I I got my first voice role, which yeah, is very yeah, fun. I, I just saw, put I in my that. stuff. Uh, I I don't think I'm gonna get anything from the second uh, audition that I put in, but I need to look at some other stuff it, to audition for this week. It happens. Um, yeah, you know, rejection's a natural part of the the job. I need to. I I I, I want to. I think it's finally time to just go ahead and do a real dirty shoot of episode three of Instruments of Fandom. Yeah. Just because I've been trying to set up a nice place for it, and with the move and with Sarah leaving and all that nonsense, yeah. which uh, also obviously for anybody who's watched our videos, Sarah and I are no longer together. Yeah, she's she's and like you you she made it very obvious she didn't want to want to um, continue. Yeah, um, we're not going to go fun. too deep into that. It's kind Mm-mm, of a personal yeah, issue. Yeah. That's a uh, that's been a, a sore spot for me for a long time. Yeah, just because. But, but but to kind yeah. of to kind of mention that uh, we probably don't have a lot of like continuing viewers. Yeah, but that's true. Uh, to anyone who might have continued from our old channel, uh, which I'm going to be posting a video on there, kind of explaining the whole situation. That uh, you'll notice at the bottom of this screen, there's a big electric zoo thing um, with with the whole situation with uh, Sarah and just kind of inactivity that we've had on the other channel we just decided to cut and start anew we're starting yeah a new channel called electric zoo here that you see it's easy evan zach um 
and kind of we discussed for a while about starting kind of a new thing and trying to start from like the ground up because uh with uh Melbury productions we had had this discussion for a while that it always felt like i at least to me it always felt like it was my channel that i had mm -hmm. guest stars on instead of a collaborative channel it was basically the channel that you ran yeah um and originally i think it was supposed to be your personal because i have my channel yeah that i that i post stuff on yeah um yeah exactly and so we did we discussed different names and like it it kind of came down to electric zoo or electric zebra and yeah, electric I, zoo works a lot better <laughs> yeah electric zoo works a bit better so uh we're hoping to kind of make some new and more interesting stuff using mm -hmm. this logo and the, this brand more than logo really um and like i said i i'm going to make another video on the other channel kind of pointing people to this and uh, we're hoping to try some new video projects we've discussed mm -hmm. a few already that we're going to be trying in the next few months probably since i have a lot more time on my hands we might start some, writing some stuff yeah might some write might write some stuff we might uh so we have some gameplay stuff planned out uh mm -hmm. there's some food and i've got a house with space now yeah so, and, and a kitchen <laughs> i was going to mention that you should try and build a cyclorama in one of the corners oh yeah that'd be interesting but anyways, that's 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 off, off, uh, off broadcast mm -hmm. talk. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, I'm hoping that we could take this and make it something interesting. And the problem I've had in the past is like, just following through on stuff. We've we've mm -hmm. always, and that's kind of an issue we've both had for a while. It's yeah. like we'll make plans and we'll plan stuff and we'll start pre-production and we'll discuss all these ideas but something comes up uh either yeah. either you're too busy or my work schedule changes or like i've i've it's kind of, it's kind of an open secret that i have very strong issues with uh depression and anxiety mm -hmm. and uh add and stuff like that so dealing with that has kind of caused some setbacks but i'm hoping now that you know to be perfectly honest i'm not working right now i'm mm -hmm. collecting unemployment but as a lot as eight million people in the u.s are also doing the mm -hmm. same thing i'm not feeling too terrible about it yeah um so i'm hoping i can have more time to actually work on stuff together mm -hmm. and this is the first episode of the Electric Zoo podcast. Yeah. Hopefully, the first of many. Hopefully, I mean, I, I'm kind of the same way. I've, I've, you know, for ten years, I've been in a relationship that wasn't. Looking back, I don't think it was that healthy for me. Yeah. Um, and I think it really sort of drained me. I mean, I've been more productive in the past few months than I have been in years. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think I think it's I think it's good to finally. And I think being locked in here honestly is kind of starting to, to make me realize, uh, sort of giving me the itch, you know. Yeah. To get out there and do stuff, because um, I've been auditioning, I've been writing new stuff. I'm trying to take a, a crack at more Dick Asteroid episodes actually, so we can finally get like a series, done and maybe actually make it. Yeah. Which would be a lot of fun because so, I just found that again. So I thought. Something fun that we could do, since we talked a little bit about voice acting, I just came up with this idea mm -hmm. right now. Have you seen the, on, right now the big Twitter meme is, like, you put up a thing of six squares and say, put six characters, mm -hmm. and you can draw them. I thought we could do one of two things. Okay. We could either do drawing, something drawing related, or something mm -hmm. uh, voice related. Okay. I think voice related would be funner. I think voice related would would enter into both of us because uh, you're not really a, a a drawing artist all that much. Random. Character. Although you have been practicing. Yeah. Have you been doing any more of that? A uh, little bit here and there. So I was thinking. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah. Oh, we should also do um another video of that uh, the VR uh with uh, what was it the painting yeah thing so. That was a lot of fun. So we recorded a video of that, and it ended up not working because it went at <laughs> 0.5 frames per second. Um, but apparently OBS just updated and added in a, a VR capture. 
Nice. So we might be able to do that uh, here again soon. And I can't believe you guessed, by the way. Oh, uh, both of the characters. Yeah. Um, I wish we could release that, but it yeah. it, it it looks terrible. Like it, it 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 would not be enjoyable. It would be awful. I'm trying to find a thing. Okay. Will... Well, the internet's full of those. So. Okay. So. Okay. I was also looking up. Okay, out. I was also looking up OK Cupid questions. Oh. I might have to do this now. I, I might just need to get into like the dating app <laughs> game. But I'm I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready to to start dating again. Yeah. And yet at the same time, I'm desperately lonely, and I miss having something warm next to me at night. Well, this isn't therapy hour, so we'll we'll discuss that another uh, yes. time. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'll be starved for attention later. So, according to this, that last segment didn't work, but we'll keep it in just because we we like showing our failure. Because we're we're masochists. This is apparently the most important questions on OK Cupid. Is climate change real? I I would count that as an important question to ask somebody. Yes, yes, it is real. Next question. Are you married, engaged to be married, or in a relationship that you believe will lead to marriage? That hmm. that seems like a weird... I, Well, I was going to say it seems like a weird question for OK Cupid, but there is a lot of non-monogamous on there from what I found. Hmm. Like, pe I see. people love the non-monogamy. Uh, do you believe contraception is morally wrong? Okay. I... Well... No. No. Like... That's kind of the... Would you ever consider open marriage? Uh, no. Yeah, no. I, I think... Um, I have no problem with non-monogamy, with polygamy. But it's not really for me. That's that's kind of the long and short of it. I've, I've been through that. Role. Do you believe in dinosaurs? I, I believe in facts. Yes. Do you think homosexuality is a sin? No. <laughs> I don't... I mean, I know. do you want to ask your dad or his boyfriend? <laughs> I, they are now engaged, by the way. I don't know if it's Sorry, you. They you're engaged at the beginning of the year. Yeah, your dad and his fiance. <laughs> and his fiance. It's awesome. Are you going to turn away as soon as com as soon as it is commitment time? <laughs> <laughs> I would hope not. Uh. Uh, is separation of church and state important to you? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Are you capable of being faithful even when your lover is away for long periods of time? That's actually a good question. I, I don't know. My assumption is yes. Yeah. I tend not to be I mean, unfaithful you'd... in general. Yeah. Like, I I would hope I am. I've not really been in a relationship long enough to have that be an issue. Is your duty to religion slash God the most important thing in your life? No. Yeah. <laughs> That's a... Uh... No. Okay, this is more interesting. The, Ooh, the most, most skipped, skipped questions. Do you think people... Do you think most people would prefer to be a lot more like you? Uh, I think people's perception of me, at least those who know me well enough to say I'm a, a friend, would say yes. Okay. I think... I think... Um, I think if people really, really knew, like, all the all this stuff that I don't share with people, I think it would be more average. Okay. I don't think anybody wants to be like me. <laughs> That's the long and short buddy. of it. Uh, is it wrong for two adopted siblings to date each other? Uh, it's weird. It's Yeah. It's, um, it's, I mean, it's definitely like not super good. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think that's, it's a, societal taboo yeah so i think that if you're going to do that you should be prepared to to deal with people having a problem with yeah. it but i don't think there's anything wrong with it do you think advanced primates like chimps and apes should be afforded some degree of human rights i think i think all animals should have some degree of human rights yeah so it depends i, I mean I, i'd say so. well i think they should have some degree of rights yeah because give because I mean, saying human rights kind of muddies it because they're not because the, what are rights yeah they're yeah. not they're not human Let, let's just get that out of the way they're like uh a human is a subspecies of animal and of great ape yeah, yeah. 
So they should have have rights as a living creature. They should have ape rights. Yeah, ape rights, yeah. Uh, do you believe most disagreements happen because people aren't log- logical? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Um, I mean, most of the stuff we disagree on isn't logical. Like, yeah. Uh, what is love? How does one dis- uh, ex- express it? You know. Yeah. That's not. You can't really science that. Um, and by the way, I've been playing with like a little knife here for ages. Oh God. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, if someone, if you saw someone shoplifting, playing with a capo. Playing with what? I'm playing with a capo. What's a capo? A little less dangerous. It it changes the key on the okay. instrument. This is a this is an ukulele capo. I had it on that. Okay. Uh, if you saw someone shoplifting, would you turn them in? No. I have no problem with shoplifting, especially I mean, if it's I, from a big corporation. I don't think it's right, but I also think that you know it's hard to be right in okay. today's corporate system. Let, let's let's let me be clear on this. I don't have a problem with shoplifting. I have a problem with stealing. Because shoplifting is to me is taking from a giant corporation that will pay that would pay their employees pennies on the dime i don't have a problem with shoplifting i have a problem with greed yeah uh if your partner wanted to name your firstborn child after some person significant to them but you thought the name was the most horrid thing in the world would you let them i i would there would be a discussion yeah I, I don't know how things would shape out. I'm kind of a pushover relationship wise, so it might happen. Yeah. But there would be a discussion. An example that they show is Mildred as a name. Yeah, it's an okay name, but I think we all kind of think of it as an old lady name. Yeah. Uh, is the U.S. educational system designed to benefit the rich? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, overall, has capitalism made the world a better place? No. I think it's made it the, the world the exact same level of bad but in different areas yeah i don't think it's fixed anything i think it has done good but it has not made the world a better place there's been good done with it yes but it by itself is is as corrupt as any other system uh should a country always need the un's approval before declaring war yeah probably yeah uh but then you get the case of you know the un will probably never uh, approve declaring war in that case Good. <laughs> yeah there we go would you risk your life to protest against an unjust government uh, i'd like to think so but i'm just gonna be honest bad, like n- probably not unless it's unjust yeah. to the point where like the only other choice is death then at that point i'm not gonna be the only one there let's just yeah put it that way basically I need some people to to rebel with. <coughs> basically like I guess this question can kind of like mirror like would you be active in like the Hong Kong protests? Yeah, but I think that's uh easier to do. Um not not because of obviously what they're doing is is not risky. It is very risky. But it's also so widespread and such an a, a part of normal life at this point that it's it would be easy to feel like you're, you know, part of something. Yeah. Bigger. Okay, well um that segment worked out a little better than our voice segment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll And we said at the beginning of this thing, no politics. Yeah. <laughs> well we we mostly did it. We kinda skated it at the end, but uh We did we did fine. Alrighty, well we that was better than a... trying to be talented. Yeah. It turns out we're better at discussing our personal lives than actually trying to do voices. There you go. <laughs> Well, that was a that was a decent podcast, I think. Uh, any last words oh, yeah, for our yeah. uh, adoring f- dozens of fans? Uh, we're still here, and if you want to see anything, let us know. Yeah, because we got all the time in the world. Yeah, and I am desperate for attention. So, yep, pretty much. See you guys. Bye. <laughs>